Hey, Plumber Tom here. If you're studying from the Mathematics for Plumbers and Pipe Fitters book, you've come to the right place. I'm glad to help you with your understanding. Don't forget to check in the description below this video for access to books and resources that will help you with your understanding. There are online courses and other things that you can take that will help you prepare for a state test. When you purchase from those links, you're helping me to be able to create more great content. Thanks for watching. Hello, welcome to this presentation of Mathematics for Plumbers and Pipe Fitters. My name is Thomas and in this presentation we're going to go over Unit 8, which is Allowance for Threaded Fittings. Let's talk for a minute about what is an allowance. We also refer to this as a fitting allowance. A fitting allowance is the amount of space taken up by the fitting that is not pipe. In order to understand the significance of this, we need to look at these steps that they have in Unit 8. The there's three things they're trying to point out to us here. Our goal in the end is to have a cut of pipe that is going to enable us to install our piping system exactly where or in the dimensions of what we want. So we're trying to get a cut. But if let's say I have a 24 inch center to center on a pipe and I just cut a 24 inch and put my fittings on it, those fittings are going to push that out because they take up space. And it's not going to be 24 inches center to center. It's going to be 24 plus a couple of fittings. It's that space taken up by the fitting, which is called the fitting allowance, that we have to subtract. So these three steps they give us are, first of all, you kind of have to know where your piping system is going to be, where you're going to install it, where you're going to lay that out. And in order to get that figured out, you kind of need to know the space. So if I'm running a pipe along, I may measure over to a wall that's parallel because that's a consistent distance. I can follow that and make sure like all of my hangers line up. But then if it has to offset or move, then I'm going to measure over and add or subtract and change the distance. If you're measuring within the space itself to figure out where the pipes go, you measure to something that's consistent. Now the step one in the book also mentions like you can look on a plan and lay it out that way. Most of the time when we're installing though, we're actually measuring from things that are around us. That may be to a wall or to the floor or to whatever else we can measure from. So once we understand where we're gonna run this and the distances that we need, then we get to step two and we figure out our center to center. That's in my example, if we have 24 inches, that's my center to center from one fitting to the next if it's coming over. I have to know what my center to center measurements are and then step three is to subtract off fitting allowances for both fittings connecting to the pipe so that I can get that pipe exactly the way it needs to be. That's an end-to-end -end measurement. When the fitting allowances have been subtracted off, that's what we're trying to get. And then I can go and cut my end-to-end -end measurement on my pipe. Once I put the fittings on, it should line up exactly how I want. That's the whole point of this. Now there is an alternative to all of this math, to all of this, you know, figuring out your center to center and subtracting off or fitting allowances. You can just kind of eyeball it. We call it eyeballing where you just hold the fitting out there and you kind of get your tape and you hold it up in place and you're like, okay, yeah, that looks about right. And then you go and make your cut. Now what's the risk of eyeballing? Well, if you're eyeballing it and you didn't hold the fitting in the right spot or the right distance and you go make your cut and then you put it together, it doesn't always line up the way you hope. You might not hit your centers. Occasionally eyeballing is okay. Occasionally just estimating or holding fittings out works. If you're doing a rough and it doesn't matter exactly where the pipes end up, maybe you're on an underground. Yeah, you can do a little bit of that and it's a good skill to have. But when you need precision, you have to be able to do the math. And that means get your center to center and subtract the fittings. Take a look at this picture. A mechanical space like this, you're not gonna get this precision. And in my opinion, this sort of beauty, this is real expert installation. You don't get that if you can't subtract for fittings and cut your pipes to the right length. Again, if you're not being exact, if you're eyeballing and things aren't accurate, you, you end up with waste. 
meaning like you might cut that pipe and oh, now it's too short. Oops, let's just throw that on the scrap pile. We can't be wasting pipe like that. So the point of this unit, and we're gonna study this in copper and in plastics, the whole point of this fitting allowance and deducting for those fitting allowances is so that we can be precise. We can be accurate in our cuts and be able to install with minimal waste, provide a professional installation, an excellent look. And those are some skills that you need as a plumber. All right, let's look at figure 1-8. The book points out that on a blueprint, if you're looking at a plan and it has pipes on there, those are gonna be kind of following center line of pipe. Not kind of, you're following center line of pipe. Now on a plan, let me just also point out that plans often show kind of where pipes go, and this time it is kind of, but sometimes you're in a different spot. Sometimes you move them a little bit to get around other things. But if we're going exactly off of a plan, we're gonna follow center line. It may even be the scale so we can see measurements on there. In this illustration, you can see that there's a T on the lower left. It kind of goes up, there's a 90 across the top a couple of 90s that wrap around and there's a valve they're saying let's cut a valve into this loop now if you cut a valve in you have your overall distance of b and then the valve is going to be centered at a if i'm trying to find a end to end cut for that a so that i can piece that in i'm going to need to subtract two fitting allowances one on the left for the t and the other on the right for the valve and I'm going to need to know what those are. Now when it comes to figuring out what the allowance is there are some tables in the back of the book that we will use for the math in this book but most of the time let me emphasize you just measure on the fittings that you have with you. Fittings can be different in shape and size from one manufacturer to another so if I have a 2 inch 90 from one manufacturer it may have a slightly different fitting allowance than a two inch 90 from another. So the really important thing to do here is when you are subtracting for fitting allowances, you make sure to measure on what you have on site in hand. Then you know you're accurate. Don't go off some tables or whatever. Go off of what's actually there. Unit eight gives us another illustration of a fitting allowance. You can see this on a threaded T. You can see the T there, center line of pipes are marked on there. You can also see on the right side, the pipe is coming into that T. You can see where that pipe stops and the space in between the end of that pipe and the center line of the fitting, that's the fitting allowance. That's what we would subtract from our center to center to get our cut. Let's have a look at this illustration on how you can refer to different measurements when you're trying to figure out your cuts. Now again, our goal is to get end-to-end -end measurements. That's the pipe we cut. Most of the time we're dealing with center to center. So you can see that we're just going to the center of the fitting and then we're going to deduct our fitting allowances like we talked about. But there are some alternatives and some of these might be easier when I'm out there with a the measuring tape if I already have a fitting there or something, I can just pull from this end or that end. Here are some examples. Center to back, so I, I pull from the back side of the fitting to the center of the next fitting. Maybe I have a pipe out there, so I'm, I've got an end of a pipe and I pull to the center. Or we have center to throat. Of course, the center, you know, but the throat is the inside lip of that open fitting. You might measure face to face. That's where the fittings actually stop and the pipe goes beyond face to face. Or back to back. You're pulling from the back side to another back side of fittings. In any of these situations, you want to be aware of what you would subtract or even add with a face. If you're dealing with face to face, you're going to add some back so that your pipe is long enough to extend into the fittings. But you have to be conscious of that. In the bottom right corner, we have the overall with center to centers measured between the fittings and the valve. Now, as you are doing homework assignments throughout this book, you will refer to the data tables in the back of the book to be able to do your fitting allowance subtractions, to figure out your fitting allowances. 
In this assignment, you'll be looking at data table 5 and 6. But to understand what's on that table, we need to look at this illustration. So if we look at this fitting, uh, top of the list here, we have FA is the fitting angle. You can kind of see that you've got a center line that's vertical and an angle over. This looks like a 45 degree angle. You may have a 90, a 60, a 22, whatever that angle is, you're going to have the fitting angle. A on these illustrations is the center to face measurement. So that's from the very center of the fitting to the very face or front of that threaded fitting. B is how far in that pipe would thread into the fitting if it's done correctly. So you see that at the bottom, we have that pipe threading into the fitting, it comes up to the distance of B. And finally, G is the fitting allowance that we would subtract. Okay, with that understanding of the diagram of a threaded fitting, let's look here at data table 5 together. And you'll notice on this table we have not only threaded fittings, but we also have the copper fittings, and we also have PVC fittings. You will refer to this table often as you're doing your homework so that you can find your end-to-end -end measurements. A lot of times that's what we'll do. We'll calculate for a center to center, then we'll come to the back of the book, subtract our fitting allowances for whatever type of pipe or size of pipe, and then we, we can get our end-to-end -end measurement. So if we're dealing with threaded, and that's what we're doing in Unit 8, let's look specifically at this threaded section. On the left side, you're going to have your nominal pipe size listed out. Then you're going to have several fittings, a 90 and a 45, as well as they give us B. B is the distance, again, that the threads should go into the fitting for whatever given pipe size we're dealing with. So let me point out, with the threaded fittings, they're not going to give us G. G is the actual fitting allowance that we subtract. You can see that on the copper fittings and on the plastic fittings, PVC there. But on the threaded, what they're going to have us do is take A, which is the center to the face of the fitting, and subtract B, which is how far that pipe comes into the fitting. That's going to give us our fitting allowance. We'll be calculating those ourselves. So I just want to point out as you're doing your exercises, that's how you will use this table. Especially as we're dealing with threaded fittings, I wanted to make sure you understand what this table is about and how it works. Let's have a look at our sample problem in Unit 8. The sample problem says solve for the end-to-end -end length of pipe K. K is that pipe that's going to run in between these two fittings. You can see each of these is a 90 degree fitting. So it looks like we're doing an offset. We're shifting the center line of this pipe over. Other information that's given to us here in the sample problem is that we have a three quarter inch threaded pipe. And with that information, we can go and find our fitting allowances. Let's go back to our data tables. So what I'm looking for on this table is I need to find a three quarter inch threaded pipe. So I come down the left column to three quarter inch. And then I'm working with two 90 degree elbows. So remember, I'm gonna to have to subtract for both ends. But let's figure this out. A 90 degree elbow for A, if we look at A, from the face to the center is 1 and 3 eighths of an inch. The other piece of information we need to know is how far that pipe goes into the fitting. So for a 3 quarter inch threaded 90, we look down this column B, that's how far the pipe goes in, and we get 1 half of an inch. So basically the fitting allowance for each of those 90s is going to be 1 and 3 eighths minus 1 half of an inch. Now they lay that out a little bit different on step 2 of the sample problem, but basically that's what we're at. We're just trying to say, okay, for each fitting, how far is it from the face to the center, and then how far in does the pipe go? Let's find our fitting allowance and subtract it twice, once off each end of our center to center measurement. Let's look at this. It's pretty well spelled out in step three. So if we follow step three here, they kind of line this up in an equation form. E dash E is end to end. C dash C is center to center. So we've got end to end equals center to center minus the total fitting allowance. That's both sides that we're going to subtract, right? 
So we know our overall. 10 is our center to center, and we're going to subtract. They have this as 2 times 1 and 3 eighths minus 2 times 1 half. That's the bracket section, right? Go to the next step. We have 10 minus 2 times 1 and 3 eighths is 2 and 3 quarters. And that's going to subtract 2 times 1 half, which is 1. So when we put those together, 2 and 3 quarters minus 1, we see that on the next step, 10 minus 1 and 3 quarters. That's our total fitting allowance for both fittings, which would leave us with an end-to-end -end measurement of 8 and 1 quarter. Hopefully you can follow me step by step as I describe that. That's the process, right? We're just calculating from center to center, subtract off fitting allowances, and we get our end to end. So now it's your turn to do some exercises using what we've demonstrated here. There's a table on your exercises that lists out five different problems. Follow me here on this table. We're trying to find the end to end measurements. We're given center to center. So that's the second column. It gives us center to center. The third column gives us the size of pipe. All of these are threaded pipe. So we've got the size listed. Then the fourth column tells us the elbows. Please note that we're dealing with a pipe that has fittings on both sides. So number one, if it says 90 degree, what we're dealing with is two 90 degree elbows, one on each end. So we'll subtract them twice. And then there's the column five, which is, that's where we can put our answers when we get our end-to-end -end measurement. Notice exercise number three gives us a center-to-center -center measurement in feet and inches. You might convert that to inches to simplify. We're dealing with a one-inch threaded pipe, but it says a 90 and a 45. So this time, on one end there's a 90, on the other end there's a 45. You're going to subtract different fitting allowance for the 90 and for the 45. You'll need to calculate those separately. Number four, you're using two 45 degree angles. And number five, if you look there, they're referring us over to data table six, which lays out the same as data table five, but now you're dealing with a 60 degree, or rather two 60 degree fittings to create an offset and you'll calculate your end-to-end -end measurements. So hopefully that helps you understand what's expected here. You've got the five problems. Take your center-to-center -center measurement, find your pipe size on the table, subtract for your fitting allowances times two, and then get your end-to-end -end measurements. All right, that does it for our discussion of mathematics for plumbers and pipe fitters, unit eight. I hope that I have been able to adequately emphasize the importance of fitting allowances. If you want to be a professional in plumbing, you have to understand that you will need to subtract for the space of a fitting. We've gone over how we do that on threaded, but this is something that you can use in your everyday life. You should be subtracting for fittings. Get good at that. Again, I would emphasize that whenever you're subtracting for a fitting allowance, just make sure you're measuring off of the fittings that you have right there in hand on site, and then you'll have some accurate cuts. I'll see you next time.